Hi, I'm Dr. Hackey Reitman, and welcome to another episode of Exploring Different Brains. Today we're interviewing Alexei Perez, and Alexei is the coordinator of the big event coming up, Trailblazing 2016. She works as the event coordinator for Picasso Einstein. Alexei, welcome. Thanks Thank for you. being here. Thank you so much for having me. So tell us about this big event you got coming up. What's going on with We're that? Very excited. Um, we are planning a one-day conference that's going to be coming to South Florida this September. And it's going to take a look at the future of disabilities, business, and technology. And our, our conference is looking to fuel the progress and the innovation that is required to improve the state of employment um, here in South Florida for individuals with disabilities, as well as inclusion into the workforce and sustainability across all channels of living. Now, my understanding is, is that your emphasis and the Picasso uh, Einstein emphasis mm -hmm. is on entrepreneurship. Absolutely. And starting your own business if Absolutely. your brain is a bit different and you have unique abilities. Absolutely. Um, well, entrepreneurship is a wonderful strategy for people who are looking to do just that, who are looking to create and design their own businesses, and they want to be their own employer or boss versus being an employee. Um, so it allows individuals to be able to design the life that they would want for themselves. Um, they would do that by acquiring income, acquiring assets through self-employment, and they would use flexibility and accommodations in order to be able to achieve that, and that's what's wonderful about um, entrepreneurship and self-employment is the flexibility that it does offer for for them. For them, and the them we're referring to is those of us, and I include myself because I got expelled in the first grade and the tenth grade. My brain's a little bit different. I don't know exactly what labels I have, but I'm sure I got a bunch of them. But it's for any of us whose brains are different that might not fit in a one-size-fits-all system, and so we want to harness our own hyper-interests mm -hmm. and figure out how to monetize it and make a living at it. Absolutely. I mean, I think at the end of the day, we all get jazzed about doing something that we're passionate about. You know, what, you know, what inspires us, what um, is natural to us, and um, self-employment is the opportunity to be able to do that. We are able to take a look at what it is that is at the heart of somebody and what their interests are and they can form a business around that and they can um, work at the all the the technical aspects of work through that self-employment and just start to develop and create a business that inspires and motivates them and harnessing the hyper interest that was one mm -hmm. of our, the big chapters in our Asper tools book which is something all of us overlook. It's Absolutely. like to go after what you're passionate about, Absolutely. you love doing, Absolutely. and figure out how to make yeah. a living. Out. Life is not a one-size-fits-all proposition, you know? Um, and I think it's important that we always look at that. You know, when you look at the job opportunities that are available, sometimes it is that. It's these are the opportunities that are available and we're gonna try to make this individual fit that one or two or three opportunities that are available. Whereas with self-employment, it opens up the pantheon of opportunities and really says, what do you love doing? What do you wanna do for the rest of your life? And you're able to say, I'm going to create that around who I am, as opposed to trying to mold myself or fit myself, adapt myself into something that is a preset um, opportunity. Now, you're a career person who also happens to have five children. I don't know how you do it, <laughs> Alexa, oh, but you do it. Working on that patience every day. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and um, tell us about one of your children, Sophia, mm -hmm. is going to be going into business on her own. Tell she us is. about Sophia. Sophia is a pretty amazing young gal. She just became a teenager last week, so you can imagine. Um, she is a very um, dynamic personality type. Um, she definitely does not fit into a preconceived idea of, 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 of a human being. So she um, loves art and science. And those are her two passions. And so when you take those two passions and you boil it down, um, Sophia has started 
um, a business that involves the sensory aspects of her makeup and what she presents with. Um, so Sophia loves um, to have these sensory wands that she holds in her hand and she holds them in her hand because they provide comfort for her and they provide support for her and there are um, a tool for socialization and different aspects of her personhood and when we took a look at what Sophia might be interested in doing and want to do for her life um, we started with what does she love and she loves these wands so we really just started to take a look at that and um, we started to take a look at her um, her interest in art and her interest in the science and um, many people do not know that separate from our five senses um, there are some additional senses when it comes to tactile and it comes to those type of senses those extra three proprioceptive um, those are additional senses so the stimulation that the wand would offer her offered it to her in all those senses so this wand has become this not only tool for herself but also a means to start a business, which was I can create wands. Not only do I love them and not only do they serve, you know, serve my purposes, but then they also can help other people. And so we started to take a look at how we could do that. And it's been an, a very interesting, exploratory learning time for us, not only to learn more about her and, and what makes her tick, but also to learn how this tool and this in entrepreneurship could kind of give her independence and start to achieve some of those self-determination principles that we've been working on for so long with her, um, ultimately leading to, down the way, to self-sufficiency for herself. Now, Sophia, mm -hmm. as I understand it, and I think labels are a lousy way to mm -hmm. describe a human being, mm -hmm. what are some of the labels that she might carry? Um, well, the first is Down syndrome. Um, and that alone puts her in a class uh, um, of, of individuals. Um, another label that she might carry is um, low functioning. Also, you know, another label might be the misunderstanding of the behaviors that she presents with as being, you know, that she is a disruptive, unruly, you know, as opposed to their methods of communication for her and trying to want to express certain things and wanting to um, share certain things with the world. And so um, it's been interesting dissecting through those labels um, and really presenting her as who she truly is. Um, and this whole time of her life, of her exploring her business, has been an interesting paradigm shift of who she is because in the past she would just maybe regulate herself to you know outside of the social group or you know hang back and nobody would approach her and now with these wands you know people want to interact with her they want to know more about her they find it fascinating they find it interesting there's a way to connect she also has changed by her selling these wands and utilizing these wands as a method of saying this is who i am I am more than what you see. I am more than what you perceive or more than you might label me as. And it's been interesting just seeing all that coming out and her sharing with people, you know, I'm a businesswoman. And the people hear that, they're just blown away. She just got her money card to put her monies that she's making from her business onto her money card. And when she pulls out her money card, people are like, at first I think they think it's fake. <laughs> <laughs> no, it isn't, you know? Um, and so it's it's just interesting to see how those labels are now kind of going into the periphery, and now who Sophia really is, is really coming to the forefront. So someone like Sophia and her family, which happens to be her family, but someone like Sophia, who has Down syndrome, who has certain unique abilities, who wants to start a business of her own, she and her network would very much benefit from attending Trailblazing Absolutely. 2016. Absolutely. My daughter um, is a beginning entrepreneur and she's starting her business. And um, somebody like Sophia would, it would be wonderful for her to participate in a conference like this. Um, Trailblazing 2016 is going to offer the opportunity for entrepreneurs with businesses to be able to showcase their businesses in an expo type of style where all the attendees will be able to interact with those entrepreneurs, get to know them better, get to know their 
their product, their, their business concept, um, as well as those um, entrepreneurs, as well as their families, caregivers, and support network um, will also be able to participate in the conference itself within the workshops, um, be able to engage in the, it's going to be a panelist and moderator type of opportunity, but as well with the Q&A. So they will be able to participate in the question and answer, be able to ask certain questions that might apply to themselves and what their business is about. Um, and as well as we spoke of, be able to be a part of the conversation that looks like um, how do they play a role within businesses and what their futures are? Um, do, is, is their business concept something that would make sense to those companies and be able to explore that dynamic of that conversation? So somebody like Sophia would be a great uh, a person to be at a conference like this. It'd be a great opportunity for her and for her network to learn um, all that there is to learn about self-employment. Now tell us about Picasso Einstein. Picasso Einstein is a, a training facility um, that brings in families and their children, um, children who have disabilities, to be able to train them and educate them in all areas of self-employment. Um, from the start, where it's really introducing an idea, a concept, um, an alternative to traditional employment to families that may have never considered it or thought about it to families who know about it, they want this for their children, they're ready to you know, hit the ground running. Um, so they bring those families in and they give them a very thorough training um, on all aspects from ideation um, to how that idea manifests itself into a practicality, <laughs> a commitment to the idea and then how it goes to from there to the possibility of being an actual business and then taking that business and then how can you make that business sustainable long term. Um, and so parents are really able to wrap their head around this because as a, an alternative, um, we have about 57 million people in the United States with disabilities and about 15% are potential they're starting out as entrepreneurs. So it's a really a huge area of growth, but within the state of Florida and certain parts of the country, it's very a very nouveau concept and something that a lot of parents um, really haven't thought about. Um, most parents are still thinking about their children getting traditional employment jobs and those type of, um, especially because of the workforce programs within the schools. Um, so they really expose them to um, a whole other way of thinking about what's possible for their children. They really help those parents future, future the situation. I think sometimes that's hard for parents to really future, you know, how it's going to be, what it's going to look like. Um, what do I want? Do I have a say? You know, can I support my child if in what they want? Um, what What is their voice? You know, what, are, what do they have to say about what they want for their future? So they really help parents explore all of that. And then from there, they then um, take graduation, you know, parents and families that have graduated and at 16 years old, they then um, invite those individuals to participate in a training session themselves. It's a summer camp program, wherein those individuals can, again, now it's the individual saying, this is my idea, and this is what I wanna do. And the great thing about that time is that classroom is all peers, it's all, individuals of that same age range and they're together and they're working with each other and motivating each other on these ideas, challenging each other and saying, I think this would be, if you added this, it'd be great. Or, you know, maybe you want to take that away and really just, um, because, you know, that's support. What one thing is it's a pillar of self-determination support, um, but it's also very motivating to have, you know, anybody who starts a business when you have somebody that's coming alongside you and, is excited about your business and calls you up and says, hey, how's it going today, you know? Um, so they become really a friendship circle around each other um, to be able to launch their businesses, so. Now, I know that uh, the Trailblazing 2016 is still a ways off. Yes. 
But uh, what is, which are some of the companies if, are you at liberty to mention that might be There are a you? few that we are, absolutely. Um, well, we're very excited that you're going to be participating with us. So we're very excited about different brains being on, on board and for you to share, you know, your, your experience and, and encouragement because that's also a very big piece of what we're doing. Um, but we are also at liberty to say that Wix, which is one of the largest um, website platform creation companies um, that is out there, um, they have formed a partnership um, with individuals with disabilities to start to help them be able to create websites for their businesses. Wow. It's really exciting. Cool. It's really exciting. They actually um, just partnered with um, Kung Fu Panda, and um, they. So we're talking about you know really a great um, you know synergy between what they're doing and their agenda and individuals with disabilities and them needing a, a platform like a website to be able to sell their products. Um, so they are going to be coming and they are going to be speaking. So we're very excited about that. Um, and we are also you know speaking to we we've had great interest, especially um, socially, for from some of what we're doing and um, not really, I mean, it's been documented on public record, um, their interest to want to participate. Um, you know, uh, companies like Microsoft and such um, have mentioned interest on Twitter to want to be part of what we're doing. So we are speaking to some of those type of companies, um, but really um, in those negotiations. So, you know, we're, we're, we're really not at liberty to get too, too far into that. But those are the type of companies. I mean, we are going to have um, some of the big tech companies. We are also going to have um, capital investors, angel investors. Um, we are going to be talking about microfunding and how um, entrepreneurs are able to access money <laughs> and, and, and financial support for what they're doing and what makes sense and what maybe doesn't make sense or how can they really take a look at their businesses and make it more lucrative for somebody who wants to invest in their business. Um, we are also going to be taking a look at how women are breaking some barriers within entrepreneurship. Equal pay day. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we are we are we're looking at a, something that's a little you know um, um, it, it's definitely a topic of conversation. You know how women are breaking into entrepreneurship and um, really being great um, CEOs of their own businesses, and so that's really exciting. Um, so we we really are going to have a great mix of people that are going to be attending the conference and participating. For anyone who might be hearing, reading, or listening, or watching this, and they want to get involved in Trailblazing 2016, how do they do it? Wonderful. Well, we have a couple of opportunities. Um, our first is we have our website, so they can certainly visit us at trailblazing2016.com. So that's one way. And we have information on our website, um, speaker interest page. So if there are potential speakers that are interested in participating, they can go through the general application process and be considered for uh, being a speaker at our conference. And then we also have our sponsor deck um, posted on our website. So if there's anybody that is interested in wanting to sponsor our conference, whether it's from a philanthropic standpoint or whether it's because they are very personally interested in engaging with this conversation. Um, we have a lot of tailor-made opportunities that we can discuss with them on how they can get involved. Um, they can also look at our sponsor deck that is available. We are also going to have a very um, engaged and active um, Facebook page and Twitter. Um, so we have um, our Facebook page is forward slash trailblazing16. So they can go to Facebook and check us out there. And also hashtag trailblazing16 on Twitter. So what are the challenges that someone who's neurodiverse, mm -hmm. who wants to become an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. what are some of the challenges she or he might face? And what is some of the help they can get in getting their own business going? To begin with, I think that the first challenge is belief in their wanting to be an entrepreneur, being taken seriously. I think that sometimes we can uh, discredit somebody who is neurodiverse as if what they want is not fundamental to who they are. Um, I think it's important that they are able to reach out to whoever in their support group will listen to them and take them seriously. So I think that's the first challenge. Um, I think the next challenge is to be able to put the supports and the 
um, accommodations in place that will allow them to access that job. Um, sometimes a person could say, I, 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 I really want to do this job. I mean, we've even seen right now um, driverless cars are really a thing not of the future anymore. They are very much within reach. And there might be a person who is neurodiverse, who is, wants to be an entrepreneur, who says, though I envision doing something that will, I need to get in a car and go, you know. And so no longer is that something that they wouldn't be able to do. So being able to understand what are the assistive technologies, what are the supports, accommodations that that individual would need to be able to access that job. Then I think it also has to do with education, information, being able to say this is how you would do it, which is where Picasso Einstein would come into place. Um, being able to say you would start here, this is how you would set up a company, this is how you would build a website, the marketing pieces, those, those, those pieces. Um, and then I think it's um, having that self-confidence, that belief in themselves that they can do it. You know, th any person could have an idea in a room <laughs> and think it's a great idea, but you have to have the self-confidence and the ability to be able to say, I can take hold of my dream. I can access my dream. I can see my dream become a reality. So really, again, finding those individuals that really inspire you to be able to sometimes we we get down on ourselves we get hard on ourselves and you really need those people around you that are going to say you can do this you can you can so some of the resources that are available we go back to when it has to do with supports um, traditional supports aren't necessarily the only way to go um, sometimes it's not a parent sometimes it's not your family sometimes you got to step outside of that maybe close network and find that teacher that really believed in you or that um, mentor or a job coach. Um, so finding who those people are. I think that um, what's available as far as assistive technologies are concerned, um, there is everything from speech communications to eye scanning program software that's out there to millions of apps that are out now um, when it comes to, again, ways to put your business out accessibility through social media, through the different types of technologies that have been created so you can really access um, those to put those supports in place. And I think the final thing when it comes to belief, whatever is going to be able to inspire you, I mean, that's a very personal choice, but um, whatever is gonna help you get up every day and say, this is, you know, I can do this and I can make this happen, um, really finding what does that for you, what helps inspire you. So. I think those are some of the challenges and some of the ways that you can access workarounds. Well, on that note, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Alexei Perez. <laughs> Thank you, yes. The coordinator and event manager of Trailblazing 2016 and uh, Picasso Einstein. Thank you very much. For more information, visit us at differentbrains.com.